there comes a time in everyone's life where we must face the truth. But what is the truth? Did existence really begin with the Big Bang? Is what we've been taught in our history books some sort of fictional reality? It's hard to find the truth in a world full of lies. However, we do have the strength within us to find the truth, to unveil it, and present it to the world for what it really is. It's your world, your reality, your truth. Welcome to Unveiling the Truth. I'm your host, Mark Howitt. Uh, that was a new intro I whipped up there for this show, uh, which I'll start playing uh, for, for the future episodes. Um, and today's date is March the 8th, uh, moving along in 2014 here. And uh, we got a good show planned for you guys today on the Truth Broadcast Network uh, with one of the hosts for a show on the network, uh, The Average Liberator. Uh, his name is Corey Washington. And uh, he's really a passionate activist. He wants to make a better world. And he's, he's got a good site, posting good news articles and stuff. Uh, so I'm really stoked to be uh, interviewing him on the show. Uh, and I wanted to show you guys his website before we get any further, just, to, uh, just so you guys know where to check out his information and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to get it on screen here. There we go. Right on. And you could check out his website at theaverageliberator.com. And here's the site right here. And he's always posting awesome news articles on here, good videos, uh, and he does good broadcasts as well. He, uh, he interviews uh, people, has guests on the show as well. And uh, his show is actually broadcast uh, live Monday to Friday, 11 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Pacific time. So... Anybody wants to check out his uh, his work can do so there. And there was a couple awesome articles he posted that I was reading, like right here, Tylenol now linked to ADHD. Uh, very interesting video. Uh, I'll get that on the screen for you guys so you guys could check it out, actually, because uh, that's pretty interesting. And I, I posted an article on the World Public Union website about the ADHD and uh, anybody familiar with the book Psychotropic Drugs in the Year 2000 uh, and the agenda behind that book. Uh, can definitely agree with me that they've tried to design drugs, uh, pharmaceutical drugs and, and all these uh, these chemicals essentially that, that, that can alter the human behavior, that can alter your, alter your personality permanently or short term. Uh, but a lot of these are, are harmful to, to, to ingest. Uh, they're not good for you. They're not good for the brain. Uh, it's actually counterproductive in the, for the most part. But the book... Uh, uh, psychotropic drugs in the year 2000 was written by doctors and uh, and and other uh, members of the industry, I guess you could say, and that was to profit essentially to design drugs to alter behavior so that they could charge money and make money off that. Um, and there's all sorts of uh, uh, information behind that. There's a couple of really good documentaries on it as well. Uh, I think one is uh, I, I can't remember the names offhand, but uh, check them out if you can. Just just Google uh, psychotropic drugs and you'll find a, a couple good documentaries. Uh, so definitely check that out. Uh, but the the thing is with ADHD, that's like a, one of these fictitious make-up, make-belief uh, disorders that they come up with saying that, you know, we need, we need drugs to treat this because, uh, you know, somebody's hyper. When it really, uh, in most cases, it's the diet. It's, that's what's changing the behavior. It's not, uh, and it's what you're putting in your body, essentially. And then they want to cover it up and give you more drugs to make you more sick so that they make more profit. Now, here's a, a good video that, that was posted on The Average Liberator. I'll show you guys this.
It's not new news that pregnant women shouldn't take medications, but it's often tempting to maybe just take a little Tylenol. I mean, after all, it's advertised as being safe for children. Sure, and it's something that the doctors use in the hospital, according to the ads, more than any other drug. So if it's good for hospitalized patients, must be good for pregnant women, right? Well, Tylenol or acetaminophen can have many dangerous side effects, and we have much information on this on drsaputo.com. And now a new study shows that pregnant women who take it increase their risk for having a baby that'll develop ADHD. Yeah, well, we learn the hard way in medicine, and we have a, a paradigm that is a very dangerous model because what we do is we use drugs to try and solve problems, and we never know all the side effects of the drugs because we don't understand cell biochemistry enough. It's kind of the way that we've been trained to think it's of a pill do. for everything that feels wrong or, you exactly. know. So like if a pregnant woman has a fever or a headache or a toothache or, or a backache, backache sure. or a sore throat or sure. whatever, she often thinks, well, I'll just take a little Tylenol. Right. But what people often don't realize is that there are alternative things that people can take besides a drug that are very helpful that don't have the side effects. Oh, like there are a lot of approaches that we can use. I mean, the things like acupuncture and homeopathy and things like chiropractic and body work, uh, therapeutic touch. I mean, there's a lot of ways to work through helping people have pain. But what we should be doing is looking for the cause. Why do people have this pain now? I know that pregnant women are carrying a big load and they tend to get a backache. But maybe what they should do is get off their feet or do something to help the alignment with, with their back using some chiropractic adjustments. Using a drug is not the first choice of a wise clinician or a wise person because almost always these drugs have side effects and we find out about them like with Tylenol 50 years later. Okay, so there are other side effects than the ADHD but before we talk about what maybe some of these other side effects are, how common is this for pregnant women to take Tylenol? Oh, well, the risk goes up substantially. It, actually, the risk is somewhere in the range of 5.5% for developing a kid who has ADD as it is, but it goes all the way up to about 7% if they're on Tylenol, which is about a 35% increase in the risk of developing ADD. And with 54% of pregnant moms taking it, that's right. a lot of a lot of children. Well, you're looking at, at tens of thousands of kids, okay, that will develop this every year. So it's not like it's a it seems like a small amount because this is the percentage is small, but when millions of women are pregnant, you're gonna be seeing changes that are a big deal. And we already have too many kids being treated for what we call ADD or ADHD. So let's talk about what some of the other side effects are besides the ADHD. Right. We're looking at liver problems. If you take too much of it, you actually can wind up with a liver that needs a transplant or it may kill you and it only takes about 15 or 16 grams in a single dose one time uh, to cause that to happen and if anybody's thinking about suicide pick something else because that's a long miserable death and then there are things like losing your hearing which happens not infrequently what <laughs> that's right no more Tylenol for you <laughs> and and bleeds of different kinds uh, that can be an issue the Stevens-Johnson syndrome, which... Where your skin falls off. <laughs> yeah. A lot of blood changes that are uh, not so good with their red count, white count, platelet count. And people get hives. There are a lot of side effects, and that's probably the tip of the iceberg. Because who studies the side effects of medications? It certainly isn't the pharmaceutical industry. And you know, too, many times pain can be caused by stress. Oh, for sure. So it's like pay attention to your physical symptoms and maybe maybe take a rest or lie down for a while and put your feet up if you can. Right. Well, we should and be thinking about lifestyle as our most important medicine because if we, if we do that, the chances of developing something uh, where we have pain or we get sick is lowered immensely. So things like diet, exercise, stress reduction, sleep, weighing what you should and having a purpose in your life that makes you, brings you joy are the things that keep you well and there's nothing as powerful as that. So those are the things we should be looking at. So when we're thinking of, of what do we do when we have pain, the first reflex should not be what pill can I take? I mean, even Darvon was on the market for about 50 years and a couple of years ago was taken off the market because they found out it killed people 
too often from cardiac rhythm disturbances. And Tylenol's been over the counter since 1950. Right. So the first choice should be lifestyle. <laughs> then if it doesn't work, non-invasive therapies like chiropractic and acupuncture, etc. If that doesn't work, then think about a Tylenol. good video uh he explained it very well how you don't need uh pharmaceutical drugs or you don't need to take drugs you, uh, often the cure is found within yourself uh changing your lifestyles changing your habits i fully agree with that um myself i don't take medications ever uh because of that i i just don't trust it i don't think that it helps and i think it actually adds to the problem definitely uh I mean, I've even noticed the difference from not taking it to taking it. I used to take cough medicine uh, when I would get a cold. And since then, uh, since I've stopped taking it anyways, uh, I don't get sick anymore. Very rarely. I mean, I was sick, uh, I guess, a couple weeks back uh, for a couple days there. Uh, you know, I was congested. I had a cough and a cold, I guess, a head cold and, a, you know, sinuses uh, and stuff like that. I, I'm sure a lot of people get that. But the last time I was sick before that was two years. And I, I mean, I went out on the March of Freedom and I was out uh, in the bush, like walking at night with, with damp air, sleeping in tents outside uh, on the side of the highway and, and all sorts of stuff. And I never, never got sick. Uh, I think when you don't take that stuff, it builds up your immune system. And when you're taking these drugs, it's actually weakening your immune system. And then you add that on the non-nutritious food that they give you in the superstores, uh, in the grocery stores. You don't have a choice if, if you're going to uh, be eating good food or, or, or bad food because all, they, all, the, all the selection is bad food. And then you have, you know, fluoridated water supplies, uh, fluoridated uh, bottled water you have the plastic chemicals leaching into the bottled water I mean we're living in a world that's designed to make you sick so that you don't live as long uh, and and these uh, doctors and these pharmaceutical companies and and even the food industries and stuff can make more money off you it's all about profit it's all about money bottom line all the time that's just the way it is so that was a, a good video that was posted on uh, the average liberator and I find Corey's really good for finding good videos that uh, that make a lot of sense and posting them and it's it's really awesome so uh, I am glad to have him on the show and actually there's a, another really good video I wanted to show you guys on here uh, uh, where is it here it is uh, I'm going to get this on the screen for you guys so you guys can see this one. Uh, and then we'll bring uh, Corey on board here for the show. Uh, but this is a, a really good interview I, I saw with uh, Steven Seagal. And I, I love Steven Seagal. He's he's really fighting for, uh, you know, better things, I think, in my opinion. Uh, and I think his career will be affected by him speaking out like this. Uh, but I, I, I commend the man for doing so. Well, believe it or not, I had no idea that I was going to be speaking tonight, so uh, I, I really am not going to fit into the characteristic uh, funny, everybody's funny tonight. Uh, what I have to say is quite serious, uh, and what I really want to say is never in my life did I ever believe that our country would be taken over by people like the people who are running it at this day. <laughs> and uh, I think that um, when we have a leadership that thinks that the Constitution of the United States of America is a joke, when we have a president who has almost a thousand executive orders now, when we have a Department of Justice that thinks that any kind of a uh, judicial system that they make up as they're going along can get by with whatever they decide that they want to do. Like Ted Nugent said, you know, the fast and the furious. What's happened with the Fast and the Furious? What's happened with the truth about any of some of the greatest scandals in American history that have happened right before our eyes? Yeah. 
if the truth about Benghazi were to come out now, I don't think that this man would make it through his term. I think he would be impeached. Yeah, America is a great country. It really is a great country because it's a country where we have designed a system based on the Constitution where we have freedom of speech, we're allowed to disagree and say what we want to say and uh, should not be persecuted for it. But on the same token, those who have something to say that is too controversial really have to be very, very careful. And I think right now we're at that sort of tipping point where whether you are a Democrat or a Republican, we have to realize that we have to put the parties aside and all to come together as Americans and realize we have to take this country back. Thank you. But I think uh, Steven Seagal said it pretty good there. Uh, he, was, he was speaking the truth. Uh, I've seen a couple other videos of him speaking the truth as well in regards to the environment and stuff. And he's really got a, a lot of solid things to say. Uh, so those are a couple examples of what you can find on The Average Liberator. Uh, he's always posting really good information and videos uh, that are fundamental, I think, and, and ring a lot of truth. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to get uh, Corey on board here. So I'm just going to get Skype up and give him a call. And uh, I'm really stoked to have him on. Uh, I've spoken to him a few times and uh, he definitely knows a lot of what's going on there. So, right on. Hey, how's it going? Hey Corey, how's it going, man? Pretty good, pretty good. Thanks for having me on, I, I appreciate it. Awesome. Yeah, I got you on screen there. There we go. Everything's good. Is yeah. my audio okay? Uh, should be. I'll EQ it right. as we go. Yeah, right on. All right, for sure. Perfect. I had to. Uh, I'm in uh, my daughter's nursery right now just because I I didn't want any interruptions to happen. I I I have like a schedule going for my my broadcast, but time is tight. But you know anything anything to get you know up on here to help you out, Mark. Right on, man. Uh, yeah, I wanted to say that right away, actually, is congrats on the addition to your family. That's uh, a life-changing experience, and uh, it's thank awesome. You, that, thank you. Awesome that you have a kid now, and uh, I think you'll be a good father as well, teaching her the truth when she gets older and stuff, you know, and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff, so it's awesome. Yeah, I, I can't wait for that, actually. It's, um, you know, it's, a, it's definitely a life-changing experience, and I'm, I just feel blessed being awake, you know, being able to deal with the process i feel like it's going to be a, a breeze uh you know besides dealing with the state but you know besides that i think everything's gonna go go nice and smooth you know so absolutely it's exciting yeah so uh i was just showing people your website there uh before i brought you on board just to let people know a bit about what you what you post on there and stuff and we watched a couple mm -hmm. of videos there uh yeah you, you're always posting good stuff on your site and uh it's awesome that you're on the Truth Broadcast Network as well. Uh, it's awesome to see the network expanding with some good, uh, solid, knowledgeable people, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the network is, yeah, it's definitely advancing nice. I, I like the, the direction we're going in. We have some uh, pretty solid broadcasters. I was just thinking I wanted to tell you, like, uh, your show is, like, I've, I've caught it a few times, and I really like your format, and I think you do a real good job. Your show show is definitely awesome, so I'm honored to be here, man. Ah, oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that, and uh, I'm just, I got to thank Truth Broadcast Network for that, you know, uh, Harry Link and Mike Pachesny and, you know, Kristan and, and Steven and all them guys. Uh, it's a good team we got going, and and uh, it's really awesome that, that you joined me on the show as well because uh, you're very knowledgeable about some things, uh, especially in uh, regards to American politics and what's going on over there. Uh, I think mm. you're, you're pretty knowledgeable about that, you know, I'd, uh, which is really awesome. And you got a good, uh, clear mind to, to spot all the BS, you know? <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, you, you definitely have to have a clear mind. You definitely have to, you know, face this thing, this whatever you want to call it, any... I like to give it different titles. I, I like to call it the Kraken from time to time, but 
you know, to face it head on, you have to you have a clear head. Otherwise, you know, you'll get caught up and you might go crazy, man. We've seen it happen a few times in the movement, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely some harsh material to learn and, and come across. And it is hard uh, hard to take it sometimes, you know what I mean? Actually, mm-hmm. uh, uh, for the March of Freedom, I'm working on that. The episodes for that right now, and the first episode is called The Breaking Point, and that's kind of like what it's about, you know? Some people, mm-hmm. everyone has a different breaking point. Some people can handle it. They got a good threshold, and they go forward, and they... They were vigilant, but others are lost in the mind, I guess. Yeah, yeah, they definitely are, and everybody does have their own their own breaking point. I mean, I've yet to find mine. Hopefully, it's you know nothing too crazy. But I mean, I, I guess I know how to limit myself. So yeah, that's cool. So how long? Uh, how like you just recently started broadcasting with Truth Broadcast Network, and you're doing it nightly, which is awesome. Uh, it's a lot of uh, mm. info you're presenting and stuff. Um, but what made you, uh, you know, want to want to do this, and how did you link up with uh, Truth Broadcast? Well, yeah, I, I do the show Monday through Friday on uh, Truth Broadcast Network, and that's at 11 p.m. Central Time, so that's um, midnight Eastern. But I mean, I was really. I mean, radio's always been something I guess I've always been kind of interested in. Um, entertaining is something I've, you know, I um, <clears throat> I MC, so I've been, like, the past few years, I had just been focusing primarily just on, you know, doing shows and writing music and uh, recording records and things like this. But <clears throat> as I basically began to wake up, I'd say I really start to wake up when I was about maybe 20 after I got out of jail for, um, you know, being incarcerated for four and a half months for five grams of marijuana. So, you know, it's really a long story. I guess I could say I've really been kind of awake my, my entire life just dealing with, you know, the the whole, you know, ordeal of being a black man in America, not to, you know, sound cliche, but it is what it is. And it it kind of keeps you keen on, you know, certain aspects of the government and, you know, um, the police force and things like that. So Mm -hmm. I've kind of always, you know, kind of thought the system was messed up. And, um, you know, being a skateboarder as well, that kind of, you know, at the government was kind of, you know, part of my my background anyway so you know I, I you know I was a rebellious kid in America um, a, well, a, you know rebellious black youth um, in a you know major, uh, majorly white community in Wisconsin so you know punk rock community that's yeah. just you know I, I kind of just kind of uh, always was anti-government but I never really th- thought that it was really that twisted until I actually ended up getting locked up and um, thinking about the situation that I was in, being in a cage. I had no idea when I was going to be released. I was just kind of there for almost half of a year, just drifting uh, because of, uh, you know, a little bit of bud. And, um, you know, it just made it just made me think. And when I got out, I uh, watched this movie Zeitgeist again because my brother had me watch it before I ended up, you know, in the situation that I was in. And uh, from there, I just, you know, started absorbing knowledge, um, started listening into uh, the Alex Jones show, Infowars, um, started reading texts, uh, Behold the Pale Horse. Things like this. Um, also, um, <clears throat> just you know, getting into everything uh, and the Fed, that book by Ron Paul. You know, all of these different things, and just trying to absorb as much knowledge as I possibly could because I wanted to find a way to basically combat the system because I felt that I was wronged completely and that the game was rigged, and I wanted to you know understand how everything worked. And that's basically what got me here. And um, before I started doing the show on Truth Broadcast Network, I was doing um, 
a blog talk radio show just because I kind of wanted to get my feet wet just to see, you know, how it was to broadcast just because, you know, I, I feel like I have a lot to say. I feel like I, ha I have, um, you know, quite a bit of knowledge that, you know, I, I'd like to share or at least, you know, converse with people about. So mm -hmm. I started the blog talk radio show and um, just being, uh, you know, doing activism. Um, I ended up in the newspaper. I believe this is what's, uh, I think that's what got uh, Mike Pichesny to see, to to notice who I was because he lives in the city over uh, from Kenosha. He lives in Racine and I live in um, Kenosha, Wisconsin. So I ended up in the Kenosha News because we had a protest against the, uh, the Syrian uh, uh, war conflict. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was doing the radio broadcast from then. So we ended up friends on, on Facebook. He seen that I was broadcasting on Blog Talk Radio and basically was say, just asked me if I would like to do a show on Truth Broadcast Network. And from there, we got set up and I've been doing Monday through Friday at 11 p.m. ever since. So Awesome. Yeah, that's uh, an incredible story there for sure. Uh, like, uh, I didn't know about a lot of that stuff there that you're talking about. And... I totally agree with you, you know what I mean? Uh, America has had a lot of uh, history uh, against like the black community, especially. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I did a documentary on Malcolm X and I uncovered a lot of stuff there. And, and wow, you know what I mean? It's There's a huge... It's deep, man. There. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's definitely super deep. And I mean, I, I, I definitely preach, you know, not, well, I'm not going to say I preach, but I, I definitely advocate, you know, equality for everyone. And I just think everybody should live together and, you know, live in harmony and peace. But there's things about the system that if, you know, I were to say if people may, may take it the wrong way, like I'm, like I may be racist or something when it's really not, it's really not that, but that goes to the conditioning of the society um, you know, of the world, basically, you know, of the, the racial conditioning of if you say something, you know, it's going to sound politically incorrect and, you know, people are going to look down on it. So yeah. we got to kind of break past that before people could really handle, you know, a lot of the uh, extreme truth out there, I guess yeah. I'll say. So do you think that uh, it's changed uh over the years, like, is it better now, or do you still see that in in society in America? In society, uh, well, I mean, society honestly is past it. But with the the way the mainstream media portrays things, there's always going to be those, you know, those those easily deceived and those easily brainwashed that go along with the establishment establishment my, uh, line. Excuse me. So. <clears throat> I mean, I think it's definitely improved, and I really don't think it's that big of an issue. And I, I honestly feel that it would fix itself if, um, you know, people kind of backed off a little bit and just let it take its course instead of, you know, every time an incident happens going on TV and, you know, spending weeks, months, and all of this, you know, questioning the whole situation. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good that it, it's not it. Uh, existent anymore you know what I mean because uh, I mean it is a, a big blemish on on American history as well as world history it, it still exists around the world this whole racist uh, uh, mentality and you have these uh, apparent uh, neo-nazis now in Ukraine uh, in Crimea you know and mm -hmm. with but we, we got to look who funds those people yeah, though yeah. you know exactly. and it, it's it's the governments um, uh, mainly the Western governments primarily the United States government. So, you know, we uh, didn't we give them 50, 50 million dollars, uh, I believe. I think it was 50 million or it was billion, but I'm pretty sure it was million. I'm just going to stick with million just to lowball it. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's on record that we don't know about all the black ops money that, you know, that they've, they've been obtaining from us. So and we can't we can't speak about that. Otherwise, we're going to be labeled as conspiracy theorists. So, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, the, the Ukraine thing going on, it's it's a rat's nest, you know what I mean? It's like when you look at it, there's so much going on, so many sides, so many different sides to, to what's going on. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. But it's all the same. It's the New World Order agenda unfolding. That's exactly what it is. Uh, it's 
I mean, the West yeah. and the East are working together hand in hand. Uh, I think isn't Putin like a royal archmason and uh, and Obama's like some like they're high ups. You know what I mean? These guys, yeah, are it's just small a, fish. They're just actors. I'm not going to yeah. necessarily say uh, Putin's an actor, but um, you know, Obama gives me strong reason to believe that he is just basically an actor. Maybe not like a Broadway actor, you know, or a silver screen actor, yeah. but he is acting because he obviously, if he does, if he does really, you know, mean and think up everything that he's done through both of these terms, then he is, you know, he's not all the way there. But mm. otherwise, he's an actor. That's the only thing that makes it make sense, you know. So yeah, and yeah, I think uh, I, I played that Steven Seagal clip. Uh, before you came on, and uh, he really says it well there, you know. He should be impeached, mm -hmm. I think, uh, just yeah, because he of what he's he, done. He should have, I think, well, he may have been, should have been impeached uh, before this, yeah. but I think uh, after Libya, for me, it was a wrap. Yeah. Uh, especially, you know, not saying, uh, you know, not to, not to tote the black line, but as a black guy, to see the first black president bomb black babies in Libya and then cause black genocide after the fact is just, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So yeah, he should have been impeached then, but you know, Benghazi, all of this fast and furious, all of these things that have happened, he, he definitely should, should have been gone long, gone a long time ago. But that, uh, you know, that goes back to the uh, political, politically uh, incorrectness and politically correctness and all of that good stuff here in the USA. We can't say anything about it because you'll be a racist because MSNBC says so and all of this good stuff. Mm -hmm. So wh what do you think, uh, like personally, what do you think are the most uh, pressing issues that face Americans today? Uh, like what do you think the biggest problems are? Well, um, we don't have money. So we're going to need some of that. Um, I'm talking about real money, uh, not these Federal Reserve notes, this fiat currency. I'm talking about something real that's backed by gold or silver, something strong. And I'm, and I'm not talking about bringing back uh, necessarily uh, Glass-Steagall. Actually, I would say you should do that, but I'm definitely saying... Um, Getting a new currency, starting a new currency, having it ran by the Treasury and um, getting rid of the Federal Reserve for one, because with the central bank, we're, you know, we're we're done for. They got us. They got us uh, tied up. And then uh, secondly, I think we should get rid of uh, a lot of these these groups uh, like the CIA and the FBI and all of these different, um, you know, organizations with within the government that just waste our money and, mm -hmm. you know, commit crimes the alphabet and sell soup. drugs. Yeah, the alphabet soup. Yeah, the yum, guy, yum. Truman went on a haywire there in the 50s. Uh, he was on a street creating all these alphabet groups, you know, the health industries yeah. and medical and dental and all these, like, tons of yeah. groups. They're Even, like, not necessary. things like the EPA and things like that. People, like... And the, the reason people go along with it, though, is because it seems like something that, that would be okay, you know, like um, the environmental groups and things like this. Like, it sounds good, but they're also letting things in that they know are bad. And then they're also, like the DNR, they're trying to take people's homes and their possessions for overfishing and stuff like this. This is just completely ridiculous, you know? We don't need... We don't need uh, vigilantes trying to enforce laws for fishing. We need to just, if you want to have town rules or something like this, then handle it that way. But don't have people on the hunt looking for people and stuff like this. It's just, you know, it's just ridiculous, man. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so what? what's your take on Obamacare? Obamacare should go in the garbage. And I, I would never sign up for something like that. I, that, it's it's funny because um, at at the college I go to here in, in Kenosha, it's just a local community college. I'm, I'm going there to learn uh, greenhouse uh, cultivation. But anyways, uh, they had the uh, the what are they the 
what are they called? The Obamacare, whatever, the ladies that don't know anything that basically, it's, it's funny. They, um, I went there, I went to their little Obamacare station. They asked me if I wanted to sign up. I said, I just basically wanted some information. There was another guy there with me, um, you know, asking questions too. And they basically couldn't answer any of the questions at all. They said, just go online. I tried to go online there. They had a tablet, which was funny. You could tell they were just super trendy, um, you know, brainwash Obama people. Not, you know, not to down anybody like that or anything, but they were Obama people. And um, cash, I guess. Yeah, doing it definitely. No, it was, they were independent contractors. I asked them, I asked them if they're affiliated with any political organization, and they said they weren't. Um, and I looked up. Uh, I looked it up. I can't remember the name of the institution, but they they weren't affiliated. But you know, they might be somehow you know looped in. I didn't look that hard. So, but they just they really didn't know anything. They uh, they were proud to have tablets. They said, "Ooh, yeah, let's use the tablet. Use the tablet." And then they bust out the tablet. They can't use the tablet, so they get a laptop. This lady doesn't know how to use the laptop. And once I show her how to bring the page up, um, after I do that, then we get to the page, and she's basically just telling me to fill in my information on on the thing and let the let the website generate it for me. So I don't understand why these people are getting paid. Yeah. Um, I guess I mean I guess some people are completely computer illiterate. I mean I was born in 1988, so I kind of grew up with the age of the computer. So, I mean, I understand these things. I'm, I'm sure there's people that are 65 plus that don't really understand computers like that, but they're, they're really not, you know, they're not showing them anything. These people are getting paid um, with government funds, I'm pretty sure, and it's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's just completely useless. That aspect is useless. I don't need someone dictating me uh, dictating my life, telling me I have to have insurance because, quite frankly, I, I'm not about to pay for it. And, you know, if you're going to send the IRS, IRS with hollow point bullets with assault weapons after me because I don't want uh, I don't want to pay for your insurance, then I guess you're going to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, isn't there, like, uh, high statistics of people that, uh, that, are, that didn't accept Obamacare and stuff like that? Pretty sure there's a lot of uh, people that don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know anyone personally. Uh, there might be a few, like in in my family or something, or my girlfriend's family, or my friend's family, or something that signed up for it, maybe. But anyone personally that I talk to on on a regular basis, I know no one that has mm -hmm. signed up for Obamacare. So yeah. that's crazy. I think it's just a way to gouge the pockets. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it was just definitely just a scam. And, you know, the uh, the minions fell for it, of course. They went ahead and did it, but that's what they want. You know, that's that's all I can really say. If that's what you wish for, then you're going to get your wish. But I, I want no parts of it, and I'm not, you know, I'm going to opt out. I'm just verbally going to opt out, and I'm just going to, you know, just commit civil disobedience and and not do anything and just sit back at at home and act like it never happened. <laughs> yeah, civil so disobedience. It's a good way to explain it for sure. And uh, another good example uh, of good civil disobedience is uh, in in Connecticut. Uh, all the people that didn't go to reserve their weapons and all that stuff. Right. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, it definitely is. I'm. That's what I was hoping was going to happen. And I mean, I knew, like, I'm in Wisconsin here and, you know, people here are about guns. And, you know, I like it a lot. I mean, some people aren't, you know, there's going to be those, you know, those that are afraid of them, afraid of the of the objects that have no soul and can't uh, do anything on on their own. But for the most part, people here in Wisconsin are super pro-gun. And... I know for a fact that if they even try to say something about we're going to, you know, restrict guns, people aren't going for it. They're trying some uh, they're trying locally here some stuff to try to get people that have domestic uh, uh, domestics and, and things like this on the records locally try to take their guns. But even that people aren't turning their guns in for and they've been trying that since 2012 here. So 
I mean, I'm glad Connecticut did the right thing and the people are showing them that, you know, we're not about to just give up our guns. Who who the hell are you? <laughs> yeah, it's a strong statement when like an entire, you know, either city or a state or province uh, is standing up against the government, not consenting with what they're trying to pass. Uh, a lot of times mm. these laws are passed too without public vote. It's the councillors of the city's vote. Uh, just like the fluoride issue, uh, that's the same thing. Uh, it's not a public vote. It's the city councillors that are going to be voting that in. And I know that's something that you're strongly passionate about is the fluoridation issue. Definitely. Uh, that's why I have my uh, reverse osmosis right here, man. Right on. So it, you uh, reverse osmos your own water in your house? Like you have a distiller and, and all that stuff? No, no. Not yet, my friend. I wish. But... Locally, there's places, um, it's winter time now, but there's still, we have a fresh spring here at, at per Petrified Springs in Kenosha. And all of our local uh, grocery stores all have reverse osmosis. So we can just go there. It's just like 39 cents for a refill. And I just go there and f stack up nice. on my water. And, you know, I tell all my friends and, and, you know, people locally to do the same thing just because it's cheap. And it's available. And I mean, I know a lot of people get like, you know, they, they're just so used to using the tap. But all of my friends now, I have them, you know, they're all just on the reverse osmosis. And I mean, one day when uh, when we get better jobs or our surf jobs start paying us more, we will definitely, definitely have the nice equipment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so how is... Uh like with the fluoridation issue and stuff like that, is your community mm -hmm. uh, fluoridated? Like they have fluoridated Yes, yeah. 1.1 1. 1 parts per million here in Kenosha. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's sickening, man. And that's not the only thing that they have. There's like uh, chlorine and other things that they put in the water too. Mm -hmm. But the fluoride is definitely, to me, one of the biggest things. Um, right now, it's kind of... It's election, it's election time right now, so on my show and things like this, I've just been uh, trying to interview a lot of the candidates and, uh, you know, bring the topic up to them so they know about, uh, you know, fluoridation and things like this. That's cool. So um, after election time, we could um, utilize them having the knowledge and try to uh, combat this. So that's why I've just been trying to, you know, get on a personal level with, um, you know, majority of the aldermen here. So hopefully in 2014, we can try to make a change. Mm -hmm. I've been, um, you know, out here kind of, you know, there's a few other activists, but, we, you know, coordinating things like this, you know how it goes. Sometimes, you know, people's schedules don't work, especially when other people have children and lives and, you know, campaigns and all of these other different types of things that some of the people involved have to do. So, you know, I've basically just been on, on the journey alone and um, I've communicated with the general manager of, of the, the water utility here. Um, he basically gave me his email address because he said that I didn't come off as crazy like everyone else that approached him about the topic did. So mm -hmm. he kind of gave me the, the the pass. But then, you know, weird things started happening with my email account, you know, when we were emailing each other back and forth, things like this. So basically our contact got, you know, cut off. Um, you know, I've talked to the alderman, like I've said. So, you know, I'm just trying to make a change. Hopefully I want to try to arrange uh, We've we've tried a, a few here, but you know turnouts, you know, you know it's hard to do in in these cities in these big cities here, uh, mm -hmm. on on the state line because we have a lot of um, anti anti truth people that live in a city like Kenosha. But you know, I definitely have been injecting a lot of truth locally here. And I mean, not just locally, my show is definitely a nationwide, uh, national and worldwide broadcast. And we have people that tune in from all over the nation and the globe and things like this. But it's it's tough with the fluoride 
but I, I can't give up, you know? It's been about two years that I've been trying and trying, and now I feel like I have myself almost at a platform where I can make some change and where my voice is loud enough in the city so people will actually listen to it. So hopefully 2014 will make a change here with the fluoridation in Kenosha. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You're doing it the right way for sure. Uh, you got to influence your counselors since they have the vote. You got to teach them and show them the science mm -hmm. and educate them on it. And and you're doing a good job by having them on and, and you know, uh, offering it to them and, and mentioning it to them at least because then it's in their mind, right? They might remember right. that. And, and there's no ballot initiative uh, here in here in Wisconsin, so it's all about the legislators. So if you're an elected official, you're you're responsible for changing legislation even on the local level. So it, it's super tough to get things done unless you you know you basically have these people in your pocket or you know they they know who who you are and you you know your 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 word means something. Mm -hmm. So you know the citizens of Wisconsin basically that you know they screwed everybody over. Um, you know when it comes to making change, but you know we're we're seeing things turn over. They have a full legalization bill uh, up in. Uh, a state representative uh, put that up. So, you know, things are turning over. So hopefully, you know, if we can get legal legal weed, we can get fluoride-free water too. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, uh, you know, once the right people are in place and they know the right <clears> things, <throat> then things will change for sure. Hopefully nationally too, like uh, not just uh, in your community, but all communities. We all got to learn about the truth about fluoride and get that out of there for sure. Yeah, and we just got to make sure the feds don't come in and try to overturn anything as well because the feds like to come and, you know, wave their their their, uh, their their control. Yeah. So. Absolutely. So uh, in regards to, uh, like, the the uh, fluoridation issue, or like, are you pretty much doing this all solo? Like, is there anybody else in the community helping you out or at all or anything? Yeah, well, um, there's a... Uh, I have a, a few friends that I, we're trying to get together, but winter time is such a hard time here in Wisconsin to try to, you know, get things done. You know, the weather is so horrible. It's so cold. People's moods just, you know, are so down. You can't really go outside because, you know, there's, you, you know, you, yeah, I'm sure it snows. Same here, you yeah. 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 So it, it's definitely hard to uh, get things done like that. But, uh, communicating over, you know, the internet and things like that back and forth and trying to just set things up for the future have definitely been uh, taking place. And I know there's a, a gentleman, he's uh, actually a libertarian here by the name of Joseph Kexel. Uh, he is down for the movement and actually he was a, a, a fluoridation warrior in, uh, I believe he said the early 2000s. I interviewed him actually on my blog talk radio show before the average liberator on Truth Broadcast Network. So um, I've been talking with him and there's also a, an, another lady here that actually went to high school with. Her name's uh, Emily Rojas, who is actually super anti-fluoride. So. You know, we have a few strong people that, you know, that are activists and definitely have, you know, the knowledge to help wake people up. Now mm -hmm. we basically are just at the point where we need to just get it all together, get the pamphlets out, get all the literature and, you know, hit the streets and find some more troops and then, you know, get it to the face of the council people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in my community, uh, a good friend of mine is uh, pretty much spearheading uh, the campaign. He's approaching the uh, the local government and stuff like that and the health uh, organizations. And uh, he just recently got an email back of them saying, like, because he was telling them, like, you're poisoning people, you know, you're mass medicating them without their consent. This is mm -hmm. against the law. You're breaking all yeah, these different poison. laws. poison. They don't like when you say poison. Yeah. <laughs> so then they presented him with this email saying that it was all safe, that, of course, in its pure form, it's it's very toxic and it needs to be handled properly, but because they, they dilute it, uh, and they and with water. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> that's what their excuse is. And they sent him this big email, like, in their in their defense, right? So that's what's recently happened here in the last week or so in regards uh, to the fluoride fight. So we're 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 keeping it up, you know. But that's what a, a lot mm. of communities got to do. We got to do that it's and just uh, tug and war. Yeah, it's a tug of war, absolutely. And then once the right people are in place, 
then there you go. Even if, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a fluoride warrior, like you say, uh, goes and runs for council and becomes a councillor, then it, that's one more vote against it. So that's eventually the wall will come toppling down, though. Uh, yeah. So what do you, what's your uh, predictions, I guess you could say, on the future of, of uh, what what's happening uh, globally, like uh, between the United States and Russia and all this stuff, uh, What's and, and even other aspects, like... What do you well, think? Well, that is, that's definitely the whole conflict um, with Russia right now. Um, I feel personally, it's just kind of crazy how, you know, you know, the events in the world kind of fall into play, at, you know, at convenient times. Like we have the Pope talking about, um, you know, it's, it's okay for um, people to be homosexual and everybody should just live together and all of this, you know, um, all religions are the same and things like this. Now, me, I'm not a super religious guy, but when you hear the Pope saying this, the Pope of the Catholic Church <laughs> saying this stuff, it just, you know, that points me to, um, you know, the opposite of what they represent, and that's Satanism. And that just rolls us back to the New World Order. That's the one world uh, religion right there. And then how are you going to uh, roll that in? Well, we're going to need a, a, a mass war. We're going to need a world war to happen. So now we have the conflict of Russia, you know, right here, boiling up. Who knows what will happen? I'm not going to say that World War Three is about to happen right now. All I'm saying is they could pull the trigger whenever they want to, and it'll happen. Um, so that's all taking place. The economy is just sinking and getting worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, we get, we're in the midst of QE Unlimited. So, I mean, we're only what we're into this uh, year two, starting year two of the QE Unlimited, basically. So, you know, we're going to see where that takes us. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. We, we're on the, uh, the verge of a food crisis from the drought from last year. People don't understand how crops work and, and things like this. So, you know, we're going to see. We're in for a wild ride. But you, yeah. know, you just have to, you got to have the knowledge. Um, you definitely, that's why I take, uh, you know, horticulture classes because, you know, we, we need to learn how to grow. Whether it be, you know, just setting up like an uh, aquaponic system or, you know, a hydroponic system or just any kind of uh, system indoor uh, grow system so you can grow something indoors and having a little something outside so you can take care of yours when it comes down to uh, surviving and eating and, you know, living Mm because that's what we're here for, right? Yeah. Yeah, we need to become uh, self-sufficient, independent beings rather than dependent Mm -hmm. on everything else. And... uh, Mm -hmm. Uh, this the way that that life is designed and the education system and everything else is designed to yes. make you less mm-hmm. less uh, independent essentially for sure yeah yeah it, it it's super nuts when you get you know get to that level of just uh, you know of reading literature and and obtaining knowledge to the point where you realize that it's just a full spectrum trap yeah from every aspect of every life, day. they have it designed for you to fail. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'm I'm reading this book right now by uh, Aldous Huxley. Uh, mm. Where is it? Uh, the Doors of Perception, right here. And uh, and uh, this is about essentially about his mescaline trip. He took mescaline to see uh, to see what mm. he would do and document the experience. And there's a there's this one uh, line in here, uh, very very profound. I think. Uh, let me just check this out. All right. I, I got to read this because it, it really does. Uh, it, it's about the education and the indoctrination of people. Uh, we can never dispense with language and the other symbol systems, for it is by means of them and only by their means that we have raised ourselves above the brutes to the level of human beings, but we can easily become the victims as well as the beneficiary of these systems. We must learn how to handle words effectively, but at the same time we must preserve and, if necessary, intensify our ability to look at the world directly and not through that half-opaque medium of concepts which distorts every given fact into the all-too-familiar likeness of some generic label or explanatory abstraction. 
uh, literary or literary or scientific, liberal or specialist. All our education is predominantly verbal and therefore fails to accomplish what it is supposed to do. Instead of transforming children into fully developed adults, it turns out students of the natural scientists who are completely unaware of nature as the primary fact of experience, it afflicts upon the world's students of the humanities who know nothing of humanity, their own or anyone else's. So that's telling wow. you right there that words, yeah. uh, symbols, everything in this life, entire life is just boom. You know, once you release that and you get rid of it, uh, then you're left with the real fundamental things in life, like nature and how everything works and oneness and I don't know. But yeah, that one, yeah. I think he says it right there, like uh, very well. Uh, and it, you just reminded yeah. me of that w with what you said, for sure. I can imagine him uh, saying that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably just flew so so eloquently yeah yeah and uh like that's a uh, adrenaline right the human adrenaline and there's a there's another part in there where he discusses how uh when you yes. fast uh your body is like uh depleted of certain nutrients that are like prohibitors almost of adrenaline uh and there's other things he says in there too uh i can't remember exactly mm -hmm to quote it but essentially it says like when you fast or you're not ingesting nutrients and stuff your brain works crazy and you have more fundament like uh fundamental thoughts uh, almost profound mm. thoughts because yeah. of it and that's also how you would be if you didn't have an influence from the outside world right yeah because like, i honestly i th think personally we eat way more than um than we should definitely three squares a day like breakfast honestly i haven't really eaten breakfast in, in the longest time and i i'm completely healthy um mm -hmm. and it's definitely just because society has always told us that we need to eat this much at these certain times and look at america the average weight in america is 190 pounds and the average height is five nine so you know that's that's overweight if you look at the you know the statistics or if you look at the what is it Michelle Obama's whatever her 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 organization or whatever the healthy eating they label you obese at a certain weight i believe it's 160 pounds or something like something like that huh. so uh, americans are obese do you guys have a, a food system like in canada here we have something called the canada food guide and it says you need to eat like seven servings of uh, vegetables yeah. three of meat all this stuff for is it like is it the, we have a food pyramid and then we have this um even that Michelle word there food Obama pyramid diet. ouch <laughs> That's yeah, scary. the food. Yeah, there's the food pyramid. <laughs> Ouch, that's uh, that's right there. That's that's telling you. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. And it tells you, yeah, you could uh, eat sugar sparingly and all of this other other BS and yeah. the food pyramids. I think they have the sweets on the sweets are on top of the pyramid, and guess what? Everyone wants to eat all the time. Yeah, the sweets. Yeah, I think uh, those those food guides are a way for these food companies to profit lots and for us to get fatter because they're saying you need all this stuff and it's garbage food that we're eating yeah. that much of. You need this much to ruin your, your health. So eat this so Big Pharma can take care of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Big Pharma can take care of it. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, and for the food, I mean, a lot of food is gross. Like I work with food. Um, but luckily, there's a lot of vegetables and things like that. But food, I think, um, at least American food here, main, mainstream food, uh, the trendy food is pretty, pretty disgusting. Jack full of, uh, well, if it's even real, um, it's jack full of uh, additives and all of this other BS. And people just love it, man. Yeah. They, they love it because the MSG, but they love it. Actually, that reminds me. I was going to actually play like a, a video now that we're talking about this. Uh, there's a short video about uh, about something uh, in reg like uh, the, the hamburger, the 14-year-old the uh -huh. hamburger. I was going to... Oh, is you, it? <laughs> have you seen that one? Um, possibly. Um, I'm not too sure, though. Maybe not. You said a 14-year-old hamburger? Yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. It's a... Uh, I think everyone needs to see this video and you just reminded me of this so I was gonna I was gonna pop that on there it's I think it's like two minutes or something so all right let's check it out and it was uh it's actually on the uh the doctors like that show the doctors so it's uh you know it's 
it was professionals looking at this and saying, what's going on here? Mm. So I'm just trying to pop it up. There we go. Yeah, it was bought in Utah in 1999, and this was in uh, like 2004 <laughs> or or something like that. That this episode was broadcast. And this is really uh, everyone's got to see this one. If you haven't seen this, it's gonna blow your mind. Definitely. 14 years old. Yeah, here we go. Disgusting. Well, it's kind of slow. My computer is a bit slow when it's broadcasting sometimes. With uh, with with everything running there, but yeah, I, I, I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, well, it won't go to full screen for some reason. Oh, there we go. An error occurred. Well, I don't know what error that was. They don't want me showing this video. <laughs> uh huh. That's brutal. Sometimes Black when you reload it, though. Adults. What's that? Blocked by McDonald's. Yeah, blocked by McDee's. But yeah, we got McDonald's, McDonald's here. To block this video. Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm just uh, minimizing that so so I could try to refresh it. Mm. Should work though. Like, it's probably just a bit slow because of the. Yeah, I've I've seen um, some videos of food, uh, five year old French fries, and all of this other gross. Mm gross stuff that that happens with this food french fries should definitely um you know decompose after yeah. a few weeks and not five years five Absolutely. years going strong yeah well i don't know i don't know why it ain't working <laughs> i always seem to have problems like i uh broadcasting do you notice that sometimes you just get like crazy problems like that when you're going off the fly yeah. just yeah, I've had my um like my screen just go completely white until wow. I was it was like time for me to stop broadcasting and a bunch of weird stuff. It's you know, it may have just been my computer, but I still use it and it doesn't happen anymore. So I mean and I didn't change anything with it. So you never you never what? know what's this really happening with this whole yeah, NSA so this, spy grid and all this other ah, BS that so goes down. Been... <laughs> yeah. Oh, that video is playing there now. years by David Whipple, who says he bought it July 7th, 1999 in Logan, Utah. This, oh. it looks... There, I'll full screen it. Still looks brand oh. new. It actually looks like one that I bought a couple of weeks so, ago. <laughs> so it's not moldy. Like, how, how could it not be moldy? Oh, how, well, it's that's, hard. Yeah, I'll it's give completely you one guess. It's preserved. Preserve it is. Oh, that's, that's a 14 If the mold either. won't eat it, if the <coughs> fungus won't eat it, Bugs won't eat it. I have maybe, to. Maybe no, no, we no, no, shouldn't no. be eating it. <laughs> Put all these preservatives and foods like that to increase the shelf life. Mm -hmm. But what does that do it to worked. our shelf life? But let's talk to David. So David bought this 14 years ago. And David, we are glad to have you, but we also are asking the question, why? <laughs> why did Please you keep this? this why? It wasn't on purpose. Um, I bought that hamburger to use uh, for the same purpose. I was showing some people how enzymes work a little bit, just some friends, and I thought a hamburger would be a good idea. And I used it for a month, and then I forgot about it. It ended up in a paper sack, in the original sack with the receipt, in my coat pocket, <laughs> tossed in the back of my truck. There you go. And it sat there for, I don't know, two or three months. The coat ended up in the coat closet. My wife didn't discover this for at least a year or two after that. And we pulled it out, and we went, oh, my gosh. I can't believe it looks the same way. Yeah. It is remarkable. I mean, I've, I've heard of collecting, like, baseball cards and <laughs> magazines, but, like, burgers? I think it's a good object lesson. It's great to, for my grandkids to see, mm -hmm. see what happens with fast food. Well, we are, David, we are, we are keeping it safe for you. We are going to send it back in a package to its home sweet home. It literally just told me... I miss you, David. <laughs> so it's uh, it's coming home, buddy. And don't worry, we we will not take a bite of it before we yeah, send we it promise. back. <laughs> David, thank you so much for. Sh well, there it is, folks. That was the 14-year-old uh, McDonald's hamburger that this guy found in his jacket yeah. pocket. Yeah, he found it in his I jacket liked. pocket and didn't decompose in 14 years. So, and the French fries too, right? So it's exactly like what you're saying. Like there's there's nothing good in that food. 
it's not real food it's like more like eating plastic yeah uh, i'll take a, a a large diet coke with that please <laughs> yeah the acids there <laughs> uh, i haven't eaten in, at mcdonald's in a long time because of that uh I mean, I, yes. I went in there and drink coffee sometimes, but that's it. I like how they wore the gloves to, to examine it because, you know, it, it's definitely, there's something up with the burger 14 years and it still looks the same. It's yeah. just, that's, that's gross. And people, and people wonder why they crave it. There's something in it, man. It's definitely like crack. There's something in it that people crave because, I, I mean, you see the lines, everybody, you see the lines in the drive through noon. McDonald's don't even try to drive down that street because the drive through is, you know, backed up. It's people mm -hmm. are hooked, man. Yeah. It's gross. And it's it's definitely a challenge. I mean, I was fed McDonald's and stuff when I was young. I ate it um growing up, you know, I live in Wisconsin, so I like to party a little bit when I was younger. When I was like nineteen, twenty, we party and I'd go to McDonald's and just down endless amounts of fries and stuff like this but luckily yeah i encountered something that was way more important and uh, realized that you shouldn't uh <laughs> eat eat stuff that bugs wouldn't even eat you yeah. know mice won't even eat this stuff like <laughs> yeah come on yeah it's uh it a lot of people would say well it's the only way uh, their argument anyways in regards to this is it's the only way to feed the world right by making all this processed food. we have to, we have to send the, the gmo to the african kids how about you just leave africa alone and it will take care of itself mm -hmm. and i'm sure it will build things far greater than you give it credit for yeah and it, and in africa they have all those all the gems and minerals and gold in there and that you got american companies and other uh, international companies just mining yeah. them out and you have such poverty there it's it's insane yeah. and actually there's one of the gold companies named is absu absu gold company and absu mm -hmm. is the sumerian like uh the god of the sea the pretty much creator you know what i mean so it's it's very occultist and necronomicon too absu's in there in the necronomicon so i don't know yeah man it's definitely that whole situation is just completely um completely wild but that's why i thought um, you know, maybe one day we could um have uh, a better a better society, a better world and Africa could actually uh you know, do better and, you know, not necessarily have to be controlled by China or the US or Russia and, you know, it could do its own thing. And then maybe I might wanna, you know, go over there or something. But as at the time being, there's conflicts here that, you know, need to be need to be resolved and i think that's that's where i'll uh i'll do best <laughs> yeah for sure yeah there is uh, a lot of uh you know uh, crazy stuff going on around the world and i think it's all a way to create fear like uh with the u.s and russia thing i don't personally think that it's going to break out into a war uh, or escalate into the third world war i think it's all just they're playing their pieces to get people to believe certain things so they could do it non-violently uh I don't know. That's a confusing yeah. situation, right, Rush, with what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many uh, different interests, you know, happening with that conflict. There's, you know, the, the whole pipelines through Russia and all these other things. Um, you know, the 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 U.S. were were a big baby, you know, when that's a, a spoiled brat that's used to getting its way, and we just, you know, we want control of Ukraine for, you know, our own special special interests, even though, you know, Russia's, you know, had things established for quite some time. So we're gonna whine and whine to the UN, and, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. Another interesting thing, too, is about Crimea is that the oldest pyramids are there. Uh, I, a friend of mine, uh, posted a couple articles about this and showed that to me that uh, that the, uh, some of the old, like the oldest pyramids I think they've ever found on Earth are are in Crimea, and that could be why they're going there and they're they they want it so badly right now. Uh, you never know, right? Uh, they did mm -hmm. that with the uh, with Ur. So I can destroy it all. <laughs> yeah, they did that with Ur in Iraq, the House of Abraham. They they conquered that area and now they have it 
And oh, actually, down. yeah, you are one hundred percent right about that. You are right. That is that's exactly what they're trying to do. I didn't even think about it from that from that aspect. They definitely need to go and destroy all of the, all of those artifacts before they could uh, finish the mission. So yeah, damn. Yeah, there's something yeah, going on, and it's uh, all according to the plan. I think definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely, man. That's mm-hmm. see, that's that's the thing about it. There's there's so many layers to the to the matrix, you know, that we live in. It's it's almost you know too much to handle at sometimes, you know, because it's there's like I said, there's so many layers to it. You can just completely bypass something, and I I feel like um you have to be a, a pretty good critical thinker to deal with a lot of this information because otherwise you just I mean wouldn't understand it and I could see how a lot of people just you know let this blow right over their heads because it, it it's pretty hard to interpret sometimes mm-hmm. yeah and that's why you gotta kind of uh, decipher it I guess it, you gotta mm-hmm. have a BS meter up and you gotta filter it out that's the that's what we do I guess we try to filter out all the all the lies and bureaucracy and hypocrisy they try to throw at us, and mm-hmm. and that's cool. the, that's that's the cool thing about knowing like-minded individuals as well, because you know we all think differently, and you know since we're all human, none of us is perfect, so we all have different thought processes, and you know together we could figure out you know way more than just one individual mm-hmm. alone so you know that's that's a cool thing about being on on the network and stuff like that too because you know just communicating with you know all you guys you know from time to time it's it's awesome and you know i just learned something i just got a, a different viewpoint that i definitely did not you know think of and that's just gonna you know help my my activism help my work more so there you go that's what's that's what's needed right uh, mm-hmm. Another interesting thing with all this uh, Ukraine stuff too is uh, like what happened with Abby Martin there and the anchor from RT quitting her job right on air. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are more mainstream broadcasters or news reporters uh, reporting on this stuff, but there, there's even the anchors now are starting to see through this, through all the lies and and stuff like that. And I think mm-hmm. that's one thing where we're separate in being independent is we we always don't have the gatekeeper there controlling what we say. You know what I mean? Uh, that's the main thing. What I don't understand is why a lot of these um, journalists don't go independent and just try to start things like Ben Swan did it. He, I mean, he kind of, you know, rode Fox to get himself established and then, you know, hop ship and then he's doing fine. So I don't understand why they just, if you know, if they feel this strongly about it. Why don't they just create their own, you know, their own show, their own stuff and broadcast and do it that way. But I guess they're looking for the the big paycheck to pay off their their schooling. So, (laughs) yeah, something. Yeah. Money will corrupt, though, for sure. Uh, Mm. You know, that's that's unfortunate about it. It, it, About money is it will corrupt eventually. Uh, Not in all cases, but there's a lot of people that can't be bought out. Uh, But at the same time, there's a lot of people out there that are just they'll take that paycheck you know they'll 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 turn the cheek for a paycheck it's brutal no yep. i mean and yeah and they were definitely working for rt too so i don't understand you know why they wouldn't feel that it would be slightly biased you know so mm. yeah like russia today yeah uh, <laughs> when Come when on. this stuff started to break like uh, it's been happening for over a year now for sure all that stuff in ukraine but when it really mm. started picking up uh, actually, you were like, did you see, it was you that mentioned it to me, actually. Uh, you're like, hey, did you check out what's going on in Ukraine? And I was like, uh, no, I haven't had time to check the news, really, you know. And then I tuned into mm-hmm. RT, and boom, right there, there's all this Ukraine stuff. So I thank you for, like, you know, uh, pointing it out to me that things were climaxing over there. Uh, I did hear about Ukraine a, about, a, you know, probably about a year ago, about, like, protests mm-hmm. there and stuff. But I didn't really pay much attention to it, I guess. Uh, but things have definitely escalated. And uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Kiev was on fire for a little bit there. So yeah, it was it definitely escalated. Um, you see that their um, the extreme right winger is um, gonna run for yeah. president, I believe, of Ukraine. So yeah, it's a big, 
Pretty serious. sure he's a Nazi, right? He's the neo-Nazi guy. Mm-hmm. Slapping yeah, up the, the uh, judges and stuff of the DA or whatnot. Yeah, and the opposition also apparently hired snipers to shoot both sides. You know what I mean? So that they think that yeah. an outside source. <laughs> that's, that's, all uh, that's you know, that's that's yeah, that's big government, man. Mm-hmm. So you know, and, and what we're seeing is. there. Uh, one thing that you said you're also passionate about was the police state of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're starting to see almost something like that over there, like uh, where the police weren't uh, attacking back. They were actually being beaten by the protesters and killed in a lot of instances because they were mm-hmm. told, I think they were fearful of the of U.S. because the U.S. was saying, you know, you better not kill the protesters. You better let this happen. And the, like you said, yeah. they're backing it. So, Yeah, man, that's, <laughs> that's what happens. It, it, it's completely ridiculous to know that the country that I live in is responsible for so much death and destruction. And, you know, I, I'm i not trying to strike fear in the hearts of people around the world. You know, that's not what I represent. And, I, you know, I didn't think that's what my flag represented, but apparently that's what it does represent. So, you know, we need to do something here in America. We need to, you know, if we want to help people out, I don't see, you know, see the problem of helping people out. But when you have people in fear that they will stand down and get beat to death because they're afraid that America will come bomb the shit out of their country, excuse me, then, you know, there's something wrong, man. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm seeing more and more articles being posted from America about the police state police shooting people, uh, killing dogs, uh, you know, abusing their authority. Uh, oh, it's absurd how much stuff I'm, I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, they're doing, they're doing ridiculous things. They're using what, um, it's called the Civil Forfeiture Program. And they're using the Civil Forfeiture Program to obtain vehicles. Like here in Kenosha, Wisconsin, they obtained a Lenco Bearcat G2. In 2012, uh, they obtained a Lenco Bearcat G3. Um, so, you know, they're they're buying armored vehicles. Um, they're loading up their, their, their personnel with equipment, with uh, these funds that they're basically stealing from people that are um, criminals and, um, you know, our drug dealers and things like this. Not saying that, you know, people that supply heroin and things like this are good people, but majority of the cases are people dealing with uh, marijuana. Like the biggest bust here in Kenosha was uh, a, a, a sting on a few marijuana dealers. And um, I talked to uh, one of the guys off record, and he told me that they were trying to take all of his stuff they they seized the majority of his stuff. They were trying to take his car, but there was a lien on it, so they couldn't take his car. So, you know, they're just taking people's cash, their property, they're using their they're driving their cars around for undercover prop, uh undercover things. They're using the cash to buy armored vehicles and sniper rifles and, and bullets and all of this stuff. And it's all, you know, legal. Yeah, and it's completely ridiculous. It, it, they're robbing people. They're mm-hmm. robbing people and then using the money to buy armored vehicles. That's insanity. It's, yeah, and it's and it's all okay because they're the police. They're the sheriffs. It's mm-hmm. you know, people people really need to wake up and I mean I talk about this every time, you know, because it seems like every month there's a there's a situation where they roll out these uh, these uh these bear cats and bring out the tactical unit like there was a big ordeal there was a shooting in a house they blocked off the the school uh the the road because it was by a school they had all the kids terrified for a situation that could have been handled, you know, a lot uh, a, a lot a lot better and you know a little bit more quietly they use you know flashbangs and pepper bombs and used a robot and all of this made a whole commotion for a person that came out peacefully you know after 14 hours so you know they're just trying to accum- acclimate everyone to the police state because they're getting ready to roll it out they're giving away free MRAPs all over the nation here in, in America so it's you know it's it's that time for people to wake up Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy for sure. Um, 
and with the gun laws and all that stuff too, uh, you know, with all the stuff w in regards to that, uh, there's some heavy profits being made uh, right now from the uh, arms industry, especially with overseas terrorism. Uh, mm -hmm. You look at all these videos of what's going on in Syria and all these other countries, and you see all these, like, just they're just shooting off into the sky pretty much. They're not hitting did anybody. You, did you see? Uh, did you see the video? There's a video. I don't know if I posted it. I meant to. I think I just favorited it because I wanted to write a blurb about this. But there's a video of these um, these guys from California. These Hispanic guys that are uh, Cerdeño 13s. They're gangbangers in Syria fighting with Al Qaeda. <laughs> That's crazy. And they shot a video and posted it on Facebook, and it got it got picked up, and people find out who the guys are, and they're in the video saying, "We're in Syria, we're real gangsters, we're fighting with Al Qaeda," and it's just making me think, uh, like, so gangs. These gangs, these these um, basically these big gangs, these uh, South American gangs, these Central American gangs are are fighting with Al Qaeda, and I know that you know they're getting the weapons. They have to be getting the weapons from the U.S. Yeah, and so, then you look at it, Ricky Ross and that coke connection there, the drug connection. They're probably just, doing that with guns too. Yeah, so it's, they're running these gang bangers as is as terrorists. We have you know. Um, People becoming Al Qaeda members, you know, leaving the the military to become members of Al Qaeda. It's just, you know, really fishy. Everything that's that's happening here, you know, it just seems like they're they're scooping up all the the low level idiots and you know just trying to recruit whoever they possibly can to um, start this thing off. Because mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we got some numbers here. I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of guns, so they're gonna need whoever whoever they can get and it looks like they're you know scraping up the last the last of the guys so that's hmm. just my that's just my personal feeling about it so yeah that's an interesting why else, why else would they you know be using gangbangers from from sir 13 gangbangers in syria like yeah they're, they've got to be being paid by someone higher up i think uh, that's an interesting connection you made there because uh, the gang, uh, the gangs activity uh, in America is huge. Uh, in mm -hmm. Canada, we have gangs and stuff like that, but there's so many in America, especially in these different urban areas. But they're also okay. uh, to hear that they're fighting alongside these these terrorists in uh, Al Qaeda, and they're they're fighting alongside us as well because it's known that all of the the military, the United States military, has been infiltrated by by gang members of all types. So huh. these people are working both sides. Wow. That is another connection. I wasn't aware of the gang mem uh, members being involved in the military. That's yeah. That's so this is you know this is all things that need to be looked at as well. So hmm. it's interesting. Yeah, like yes. and with uh, Fast and Furious, you have that happening, and Obama was directly uh, you know pr uh, pretty much he gave the green light for that uh, with Eric Holder and all those other uh, sh uh, pardon my language schmucks. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely schmucks, man. <laughs> yeah, Project Longevity. You have that going on in Connecticut, and then you have this. They're trying to like you know restrict, uh, make you register, and all this stuff. Uh, but I, I would definitely like. I've always known that it was the Americans, uh, not the Americans solely. But there's other elements too. I, I I strongly believe Israel's also involved over in Syria, heavily involved Mossad and all that stuff. They're mm -hmm. I think they're also working with Al Qaeda there. Uh, so it's like a, it's like the Israel-U.S. connection again, happening. That's oh no, we can't say that because everybody will want to stone us if we say something about Israel. Yeah. Even though you know they're they're, I mean personally, just like I, they're openly hor horrible people. The way they they treat the Palestinians, the way they treat the uh, African immigrants, the way they're just you know, they're, I mean not all of them. But the government, the Israeli government, mm -hmm. is horrible. I can't say the people are horrible. I'm sure the people are really nice in Israel, but their government is just as corrupt as ours. And you know, we're basically their, you know, America's their their um, their little uh, lackey. So you know, we do what they say, and um, 
they're just as corrupt as us, us if not more. So, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, th- they've always been working together, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and with uh, Israel being so close to what's going on in Syria, and then you like you know Turkey, you have this whole region there: Iraq, Afghanistan, the whole Middle East. Uh, it's like a, a domino effect really happening all in that region. They're trying to like you know get their get control of that, and I definitely think that. Uh, Mossad and Israel uh, have a huge, huge part in that. Uh, and uh, obviously the U.S. too. Uh, they're using their muscle and force in there as well. Um, but it's with what's happening in the Crimea right now too, I don't know how that's going to escalate on the whole global scale. But there's uh, the United Nations is like the one world government system and there's not too many countries that aren't under that umbrella uh, that aren't really adhering to the U.N. charter and all that yeah. stuff. That'd be North Korea, uh, you know, uh, a couple others. Uh, Syria, I believe, is one of them. Yeah. So, well, they they will be shortly. Mm-hmm. Give That's it time. What doing. They've, yeah, yeah, man, it's it's sad to say that, but and, and they definitely did not want that. But that's. That's where it's headed because the West has to, you know, they're the big baby that has to get what it wants. So. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, we need to wake up. You're absolutely right. We need to get off our butts and get out there and do something whether it be you know spreading information sharing information with your friends talking about this tr- influencing your local party members doing whatever it takes at all times because it's really escalating now uh the snowballs going down the hill it's getting huge there's a lot of problems yeah there's um i mean and it, we just have to remember that you know we have to just manage our time and, you know, no load is too much. We can take care of all of this because, you know, it can seem overwhelming, but, you know, it's just something we got to deal with. Or, you know, our kids are going to have to deal with it or their kids are going to have to deal with it. So let's just knock it out and make sure their lives can be nice and easy because, you know, we're already at this stage. So, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's some serious issues in the world that we can easily take care of if they're addressed mm-hmm. properly like free energy that's a big one the fukushima stuff that's pretty much irreversible but we should be addressing it a lot more than we are uh there's all these problems in the world that are you know, like with the invasions and the occupations those are another thing that we should not be allowing to happen cleaner food cleaner water free energy if we focused on those things i think the world would change very quickly but yeah but we're going to have to start with the water first because, you know, once we get the fluoride out, then people will start thinking again and things will, you know, things will, will warp themselves out. Mm-hmm. And yeah, fluoride, and- though, that's, that's, that's the biggest, that's the reason everything is happening right now. Without the fluoride, they, they can't control us. They still have their TV, but I don't think it'll work as good. They'll still have their psychotropics, but I don't think it'll work as good without the fluoride water. They need to keep the levels of fluoride in us high so, you know, our our, our minds are just, you know, mush. And I, I definitely can tell the difference of my thought process since, you know, I stopped consuming fluoridated water and started avoiding fluoride. Oh, yeah. It's very noticeable. Any listeners out there, viewers out there who have done the change themselves, could I guarantee you agree with, with what we're saying here? Um mm-hmm. It, you notice it, uh, not well, pretty much instantly after a couple of days. You know, once your body's yeah, it, got good water in it, it's good. You start thinking clear and all of this, all this good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So, like, there's uh, there is things we can do to address this. Uh, you know, and the media it does influence a lot of this. I think the media needs to start talking about real things rather than. Justin Bieber's and all this other stuff and one thing you you mentioned there about the brains being mush uh, I recently saw an article it was on CNN too there's a, a report on this on CNN how there's a, a bunch of babies in Washington that were born with they had Half minimal brain. brains mm-hmm. their skulls were like not very developed either uh, I don't know uh, could be the effects of Fukushima Fukushima that's what I, that's the first thing I thought it had, yeah. it had to be but I mean, why in well, that area yeah, of Washington? The, That's I what I was wondering. The first, I think the first case of that was in 2012, I believe. 
but I guess it just has been increasing. So, I mean, that makes perfect sense. In 2012, Fukushima happened in, you know, the end, basically, or the, the last half of 2011. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I think it's Fukushima. It just, what changed? The only thing that changed was, you know, Fukushima happened, so. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of that happening in other places? Because I only heard about it. Yeah, in that that's the first Washington. time I've ever. Well, I've heard um, actually in Mexico City, people's children uh, being being born without a brain um, because of the pollution in Mexico City. So mm. I mean, so it is. If there's some places. sort of yeah. So if there is some sort of connection with that, possibly. But. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, I mean, we we really don't know. These things have to be studied. But I mean, who are we gonna rely on to do that? Yeah, it, it's like the FDA. You watch that hearing <laughs> where they're talking about the Fukushima and the, or I, actually, this was after the BP oil spill, and they did. They, mm -hmm. was, they admitted right there that we uh, we're not testing the seafood. And there's a nope. video there as well of the Fukushima farmers saying that we're. We're shipping this stuff out without testing it. We know it's toxic, and we're still shipping it out. What are we doing? Got to get paid. Money. That's all. They don't care. Mm -hmm. They're shipping it across the world, or you know, across the, you know, across the nation. Yeah, I don't care. Give me that money. Go ahead and eat your radiated shrimp, because you know you can't live without it, because it makes you feel classy. You know, <laughs> and that's yeah. just people being trendy, man. It it sucks. Mm -hmm. it sucks. Yeah, they have to do the research, otherwise they're going to be duped, and it's partially their fault. You know, we always get mad at you know the the people selling these things, but you, as a consumer, you need to do your research. If you know shrimp comes from the Pacific, then why are you eating the shrimp? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy. That's that's it's like we know uh, not not myself personally, but there's a lot of people out there who know full well about this. They've been warned, but they don't care. They just keep mm. consuming the fluoride, eating the seafood, and it's their health. They're gonna be drinking the diet on. cokes. That's yeah. really that's that's one of the ones that really get me though, because the aspartame, the aspartame is so it's so horrible. It can make you go blind and cause you to have uh, brain tumors, you know, brain cancer, and all of these other things. Mm. Excuse me, and. You know, it's highly addictive and it makes you obese and people consume it because it, they they feel that it's going to make them lose weight for one or they consume it because it's just in everything like gum and candy and all of this other stuff um, and they get hooked on it and you can try to tell them not to do it and I've I've told people about fluoride and it's easier to get a good response about fluoridation than it is to get a good response about aspartame. And that's because these people become aspartame junkies. And I'm not trying to talk down about it because it's bad, because it's, they've, been, they've been duped by it as well. You know, they've been told that it's okay, told that it's better than sugar and all this other ridiculous stuff. And it's really just the byproduct of E. coli, genetically modified E. coli at that. So <laughs> it's, it, it just, it hurts because I see these, I'll, I'll be at the grocery store and I'll see these, just you know, these people. It's just so sad to see them. They just look so down and they look like they want to lose weight. And then they're grabbing four or five cases of Diet Coke. And I just, you know, sometimes I'll say something to them. But sometimes it's just I can't just do anything but feel bad because mm -hmm. there's no no turning back. You know, it's it's really is it's really a sad thing, honestly. Man, because it yeah. these people are killing themselves, and they think it's helping them, and they're just you know they're drowning their sorrows in more in more poison. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the other day I was on my way to work, and I drove by this woman on the on the corner, and she was she had a two liter of Diet Coke like this, and she was just hammering it down at the bus stop. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? This is in the winter too. She's sitting there with a two liter, at, and she was like, you know, I would say she was overweight, and she dressed like she had like. You know, she didn't couldn't afford good clothes. Just you know, mm -hmm. down and out in, from the system. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. We are a product of this system, which is unfortunate because we have to deal with it. Uh, but that's once you know the problem, you address it, then you could solve the problem, right? Yeah, yeah, man. And it's I mean, you got to take baby steps at first, but then, man, 
me, I'm trying to sprint, man. As, as you can see, I mean, that's why I started the broadcast. Mm -hmm. That's why I run the website. I mean, I'm I'm really trying to do a lot of things. I, I, I have a few ideas for a couple of documentaries that I, I want to get started for production in production. So, you know, I'm just trying to stretch my legs and take this thing full speed ahead because once you reach that point, it's, you know, it's like, man, I have this knowledge and, you know, I need to do something with it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's, that's commendable because that's what it's for. Uh, everything we leave behind us doing these broadcasts and making documentaries or whatever we do is there forever. Unless mm -hmm. somebody gets rid of it. If you back it up, you have the data, it's information, it's knowledge and it's there forever. That's what's, that's what I always think about, you know what I mean? That's why I try to do so much as well and try to get as much done in, in one year as possible because what we leave behind is essentially like our legacy, right? It's going to help people out, yeah. help them understand stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's help them get through it, man, because it's, it's tough. And I, I mean, me, like, I, I really don't get too far into my super personal, you know, background or whatever. But me, personally, like, I was raised by my grandmother, I, you know, never really had that, you know, that mother, father, you know, life connection, you know, and it's, it's, um, oh. Oh, I think we lost Corey there for a second. I noticed it was kind of uh, going a bit slow there, so I'll have to get him back on board there. Yeah, there's a problem with this call. Yes, there is. Oh, and it won't let you rate it. Usually Skype calls, it'll let you rate it right after. But uh, it doesn't seem like it's uh, allowing me to do so now, which is strange. Um, and it won't let me call him right now. He must be, uh, must have had an internet problem there. But I'll wait till, uh, to get him back on there. Uh, once he comes back, if he uh, gets a good connection again, that's how we do it at Truth Broadcast. Though we gotta, we gotta do with what we got and try to do the best we can, and and uh, you know try to s work with what we got here. And that's why I commend all the broadcasters on the network because it's not easy. Sometimes you do get uh, confronted with a lot of problems like this, and and uh, just gotta try to make it better. Oh, it says call dropped. Well, I don't know. I'm sure he'll call back. There he is. Right on. Bonjour. Hello, hello. Sorry <laughs> about that. I definitely forgot to plug my laptop in. I apologize. Oh, no problem. Yeah, I was just saying that's how we do it on Tooth Broadcast. Sometimes things happen, you know what I mean? Can't yeah, help that. If, you, if, if you watch The Average Liberator, you know that I, I stress that these are live broadcasts and anything may happen randomly. You might hear some random uh, dial tone music or something, but we will be back ASAP always, and it always happens. So <laughs> Yeah, well, it's good to have you back for sure. Uh, one thing I notice sometimes is my things freeze up and uh, you have to stop it and start it over again, re-log back in, all that fun stuff. Uh, and obviously videos don't play and all that stuff, but yeah, you're all right. We're doing this live, so there's, it's not always going to be smooth. You know, we don't have anybody behind us. There's no crew. It's no, it there's <laughs> yeah, definitely no crew. Just a couple of guys running their own platforms. But you know, that's that, that's the fun thing about it because it it makes you feel more. You know, like like this is ours. You know, like my show. It, it it's my show. I, like I have to say. There's really no limit to really what I can do. I hold, you know, the the future of the show is in my hands, you know. And same thing with your broadcast. And it it just it feels good knowing that that you know there's no there's no real boss. There's really you know there's no one, um, you know, trying to uh, filter our information or anything like that. We just go 100 percent all in, and it it's great. Mm hmm. Yeah. I mean. Harry Link is the founder and, and he's an awesome guy, you know, because he lets us have the freedom and he, he helps us mm -hmm. out. And Mike Chesney, yeah. if we had a crew, Mike, you would be the crew. <laughs> I, yeah, I would Mike say. definitely. 
Yeah. Mike definitely has. He he's the uh, he's the one man crew. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, he's definitely. Did he, uh, uh, did he teach you a lot about the broadcasting and editing and all that stuff as well? Yeah. Well. Um, well, basic. Well, actually, I mean, he helped me out for the. He set me up, helped me out in the beginning. Hit hit me with the basics, and you know, like any good sensei, he's gonna let you, uh, you know, figure figure out some of these things on your own. And I mean, I'm pretty good at picking stuff up. So after I got the basics down, I've been just you know, trying to uh, learn this thing and trying to master it. And I, mm-hmm. I think I'm getting a lot better. Um, I'm sure people that tune into my broadcast can kind of tell that I'm getting things a lot smoother and uh, the the display is getting a lot nicer and things like this. So, you know, it's just, you know, it's a work in progress. Hopefully one day I hope my, you know, our, my broadcast will be, you know, at the level of, you know, of the greats, I guess, you know, like uh, maybe like Alex Jones or one of those guys, you know, have the nice studio. But, you know, it's it's a work in progress. And. Mm-hmm. Like I said, we all fund these ourselves. You know, it's uh, funded by the listeners and 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 by us, the hosts. So, you know, yeah, it's cool though. Yeah, it's it's always good. Uh, like you know, when when somebody does contribute, even like a small donation or anything like that, because it does help us out. Uh, you know, getting better microphones, better equipment. Uh, I'm trying mm-hmm. to save up right now for like a screen for the back, like a a big screen kind of thing, so that it. It kind of mm. you could show clips on there and stuff, uh, but all this stuff costs money and and a lot of times uh, it's not about it, it's not about the money at all. Uh, but a lot of times it does come out of our pockets. It's funded by by the broadcaster, you know, and we mm-hmm. don't make a lot of money because the economy's sinking and you got a family to take care of. Uh, not easy. Yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah. I mean, we. I definitely have a a lot of great listeners. I know you do as well. That that tune in faithfully, like the network in, in a whole. We have great listeners, and they definitely uh, help us all out. And it, yeah. I, I mean, I know I really appreciate it. They've uh, helped me uh, help uh, enhance a few things on my and on my show. And you know, now things are, are running a lot smoother, and it's actually given me more confidence to come with more hard hitting information, and you know, get better guests on and things. Because, you know, when my show was dropping out all the time, I definitely was hesitant to have people on all the time. But now we're at the point where I'm ready to get, I want to get some some nice big names on. So we'll awesome. see what happens. It's the cool thing about having the show. Like people are, will just, you could just ask someone to come on and they'll, they might say yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's a whole lot of people out there that, that would be awesome to be guests on the show. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's, that's, it's awesome. So what, what, who's, uh, like out of the many broadcasts you've done, uh, I know you started after me, but you got a lot of shows now because you've been doing it like five days a week. Uh, mm-hmm. what are some of the best guests you've had on that were the most, uh, um, so far? Well, I mean, uh, it was pretty cool to talk to Dan Badandi. He had some pretty cool information to, uh, to lay out. Um, that would, um, geez, man, um, your interview was an awesome interview um man it, when i'm on the spot it's hard to think uh back like you said i have had uh quite a few broadcasts um mikhail thalen was a good interview um he's actually writing great articles he's working for Infowars now he's having articles up on drudge report all the time so he's cool he's a friend of the broadcast um Man, uh, a guest that I'm going to have on, which I think is going to be a good one um, in the next uh, about month and a half, just because of scheduling. But, you know, we have to schedule things in advance. Uh, we're, I'm going to have Kelly Carlin on the broadcast. So that's one I'm excited to do because it's George Carlin's daughter. And she has a, a, she has a radio broadcast. Um, that is, you know, basically like a a, a, a truth broadcast. So nice. I I think that one will be a great interview. And I mean, there's a few other people that I have in the works coming on. There's other people that have been on the show that I can't think of right now, and I apologize to all of them. Um, you know, I've interviewed a lot of the aldermen here in Kenosha. I try to take um, kind of a local approach, somewhat as well. Um, um, Professor Gillen. He's a friend of the broadcast. Um, 
cool. Uh, I mean, and a bunch of other people. Um, and like I said, I have uh, more guests that I have lined up. And now that my broadcast is nice and smooth and running nice and perfect, um, you know, the sky's the limit here. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I've noticed you definitely since since you first started. You are getting better at everything. It's going smoother, like you said, and that's that's how I think all the shows on the Truth Broadcast probably have have evolved. You know, it's it's the natural mm-hmm. evolution of the the independent broadcaster. It's uh, it's awesome. It's a good evolution, and yeah, like a lot of the guests you mentioned, uh, like a couple of them I knew I knew their names, but uh, some of them I didn't. And that's another good thing about the broadcasting is uh, you get these people that no, not a lot of people know about, and you get to introduce them to to the world, I guess. Uh, for yeah, others that's actually out. that's actually one of the things that I've. Um, been trying to really focus on like it's always good to get the people that everyone knows uh big names but then again like you know what about all of these people that are putting out this you know good information that Mm -hmm. people don't know about because you can find a lot of these interviews that um you know that that take place you can see them you know from all of the major outlets that week you know like um you know like i'll give it up to the guys at the rundown they had ben swan on before mm-hmm. the day before he was on Infowars, and then two days before Luke Radowski interviewed him. But you see, now we we could see him also on on Infowars, and we could see him with Luke Radowski, and it just kind of you know it's a lot of information at one time. You know what I'm saying? And that goes. That's how these people schedule. You know, yeah. they always schedule a bunch of people, uh, all of their interviews, in, in a block schedule so they can get them done. So mm-hmm. what about all the information that this other person has that no one's focusing on because this whole week is being dedicated to this this individual and things like this. And we see information come and go fast and fast. And we're in the age of, you know, things you, you see it and you let it go and you might forget about it. So, yeah. you know, you got to you got to get these people out there and hopefully they catch on and then people will understand their information because a lot of the time these, uh, you know, these what I don't want to, you know, I don't want to use like the pop culture scale, but like these B list, um, B list activists or whatever, you know, whatever you want to, you know, label these people as these groups, um, you know, they have a, a great information that people need to focus on. They yeah. gets kind of, you know, swept under the rug. Mm-hmm. Like I've even had a couple of my friends on because my friends taught me things, you know what I mean? A couple of my friends did teach me a lot of what I know today and, and you know got me onto certain kinds of information and i i want to continue to do that and it's always good too when you get uh just regular people on like from the public uh who are aware of what's going on and they got something to say because they have every right to say something as well right you know and yeah and they they definitely want an outlet to speak their mm-hmm. mind as well and people will see it and they'll pass it around to people so i mean it's a win-win for everyone yeah and that's the good thing about the truth broadcast too you know we're that's not what we're about we're not about getting big names we're just about doing what we got to do and getting good credible information out there no matter who's got to present it i guess yeah regardless of who i mean it might be a big name that presents the credible information or it might just be an average joe that wrote the article you know whoever it is you know that's who we're looking for yeah it's awesome yeah and and I, I did want to say, like, we do have um, a good family here. And I like how we, you know, we all work together, like I was saying before. And, you know, like I, I just had um, Travis Provo on my show the other night. And he hosts Skeptic's Truth on uh, on Monday nights at 7. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just just trying to, you know, help him out. Have I had him on the show to help, you know, get some of the the audience recognized with him so they know his show so they tune into his broadcast because it's all just you know to help the to help the network to help get the truth out and you know get people more perspectives out there you know because everybody has a different perspective on all of this stuff so yeah you're absolutely right and it is good to see these new shows coming on the truth broadcast network as well it's expanding good and that's it's awesome that's what's we, that's what's needed and and like you said, Skeptics Truth is one of the newer ones. Uh, there's there is a couple other ones too, like Conspiracy Wire. Uh, I think is another mm-hmm. new one. Uh, so is that is that just Mike or is that Mike and Chris now? Uh, it's just Mike, I think. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I thought. I seen he did a, a beta run on it, but 
I didn't know if that was just going to be just him or how he was doing that. See, it, it is new, so I don't know. It is that just goes to show, like it's once you get once you get your feet wet in the, in you know this this uh, this online activism, I guess you could say, you just want to dabble with you know full spectrum, and I guess that's just the the uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurial um, aspect of of life i guess you know you just want to create more and more and more and more and dudes now he's on show number two he's producing all these cool intros and stuff it's just you just gotta you just gotta do it and get it out there yeah and in life that's all it's ever taken was just to do it because yeah. if you don't and you just think about it oh i gotta do this i, I think a lot of people have that problem, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know what causes that problem. I, I guess you could say it's nutritional depletion and, and other aspects. It's probably a, a whole plethora of, of, of causes. But there is a lot of people that, you know, they really know what they got to do, but they don't do it because they're not initiated enough. Or I don't know. Even I'm a victim of that, I have to admit. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Yeah, I can be, uh, I can be uh, pretty hesitant at some times as well. Sometimes I should, I, I feel like I should say something and, you know, depending on the situation, maybe I'll just let it go when, you know, when I should say something or maybe I will say something. But when I don't say something, I do always think to myself, like, man, you should have, you should have just went ahead and shouldn't have been so resistant with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then again, it's like, I don't want to feel like I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be mean because, you know, gen generally I'm a pretty nice guy. So naturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Uh, but there is things that, I don't know, there's things we could do. It, it is hard when you got life and it consumes your time and all that. But it is good to see that there is a lot of people starting to band together and work for common goals. It's awesome. Uh, that's the main thing. Definitely, definitely is because you know once we work to, once we, you know, finally unite. Really, we you know truly unite, not this artificial unity forced upon us by you know the establishment. Then we'll um, you know then we'll definitely see some some great times. But until then, you know we just got to keep on fighting. Yeah, it's so easy to give up in this fight too because it's so difficult to when you got these walls. But it's important to maintain it. It, I mean, it, it, you can't change it unless you try. That's the bottom line, and you can't let other people do it for you. You gotta, you gotta be a part of that too. That's that's another key thing to learn. Most definitely. Yeah, one of the one of the uh, comments just in the chat room, very interesting. Next on the average liberator, Edward Snowden. <laughs> <laughs> that was IC Snowden. freedom. <laughs> we'll we'll see. We'll see. I know he's doing. Uh, I think he's doing the. Uh, holographic uh, appearance at um, South by Southwest. So maybe I can uh, hit up some of my contacts and uh, see if we can get snowed into hologram into uh, the Average Liberator studio for an interview. <laughs> That'd be awesome. It probably only cost me $100,000 uh, $100, or whatever uh, currency Russians use. <laughs> I, I I don't know that off top. <laughs> I think what are they? Rupee, rupees? Rupees? Uh, no, are rupees? I don't know. Something. Yeah, I, so, I, I yeah, can't they, be sure. But something I, with a grizzly bear on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. They, they love those bears over in Russia. No, that was that was a, a light joke. Some people don't understand my 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 light humor. I actually <laughs> crack a lot of jokes on my broadcast and I don't think anyone ever gets it. I think it's just because I'm, I'm lame like that, but it's all right. Well, yeah, and that, that's kind of like a hip-hop thing too, right? Like a lot of yeah. hip-hop, they, 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 they disguise their that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I, their I keep it witty. Try to keep it witty as much mm -hmm. as possible just because a lot of stuff is, you know, these, these topics are pretty serious and if I didn't laugh a lot of it off, I would probably get really depressed so yeah it, it can be depressing indeed i definitely yeah. uh, hear you there but yeah <laughs> we only got a few minutes left of the broadcast i i do want to oh, thank you that was, yeah no problem man. yeah that time was, flies nice, man. when you're having fun for sure uh but yeah definitely. i did want to thank you and uh 
I got to say, like, uh, it's been awesome talking with you, and and I'm glad to see your shows getting uh, getting uh, more listeners. Uh, you know, you're progressing as a as a broadcaster and stuff. And and anybody listening, definitely check out his show, Monday to Friday, eleven Pacific time, or no, Central Standard Time. Yeah, Central Time. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, and uh, uh, can you uh, let people know some links, you know, to maybe uh, catch your tunes, your music, uh, anything else uh, you want, where you want to link people to? Yeah, you could. Um, well, if you want to uh, just you know follow up, follow up with me up to date. Um, you could always check out theaverageliberator dot com, or you could follow me on Twitter at theaverageliberator. Just no vowels except for the a. Um, and um, also, you know, you could like the page on Facebook, or even just add me on Facebook, Corey Washington, K O E R R I only one in the world so i'm not hard to find at all or if you just type you know my name in a search engine everything will pop up so you could uh follow me that way so yeah right on that's awesome yeah it's good stuff so yeah uh, check out his show uh, anybody who's interested and i definitely got to say thanks to the listeners as well for joining in tonight um without you guys you know we would we'd probably still be making broadcast videos or whatever but you guys definitely keep us going and give us inspiration to keep digging up some good stuff and getting good guests on it and i do want to thank my guest tonight Corey washington for joining the show it's been awesome having thank you, you on, for having me on man i appreciate it indeed and i guess uh, until next time guys keep unveiling the truth and we got some good uh, i got some good guests planned uh for the next little bit uh Actually, Vinny Eastwood. I got an interview uh, coming up with him uh, as well oh, as a, dope, dope. Uh, yeah. That that's a good episode. Actually, he was very uh, uh, in, in interview rather. He was very passionate about things. Uh, it was pre-recorded because of the time differences. He's a busy guy, uh, mm. but I did capture the uh, interview. And uh, I'm doing an episode of my own hometown of Sudbury. That's next week. Uh, that's definitely an interesting broadcast. A lot of people don't even know the the uh, anything about the city I live in, but it's got a lot of secrets and it's connected to the world in fact uh this place uh pretty much produced all of the ammunition and and uh bullets and stuff like that for the first two world wars uh a lot of information people don't know about my city that'll be on that and uh, uh any guests coming up for you that you want to mention that are coming on your show uh, in the next little bit or any episodes um true as of right now honestly i have the only per- person I have booked, I have this uh, this guy named Bobby Electric, and he's uh, like an activist MC. Um, and next week, sometime, I just have to finalize the date. I think Friday I'm going to have him on. But besides that, I haven't really um, been focusing too much on um, getting any guests on, just, you know, with the birth of my daughter. And, oh, yeah. the uh, you know, I've been focusing a little bit more on the website. But soon I have been in the talks with a, a lot of people. So I just got to finalize some interviews and just stay up to date. I'll keep all that information on the average liberator dot com. So just keep on checking that out and stay up to date with me. And also, I wanted to say subscribe to my YouTube channel because I have some pretty cool uh, liberator rants on there that I think people might like. So liberator rants. There you go. So got to thank everybody again. Cheers, guys. Until next time, peace. Peace, man. Thanks for having me on. Cheers. Cheers. There comes a time in everyone's life where we must face the truth. But what is the truth? Did existence really begin with the Big Bang? Is what we've been taught in our history books some sort of fictional reality? It's hard to find the truth in a world full of lies. However, we do have the strength within us to find the truth, to unveil it, and present it to the world for what it really is. It's your world, your reality, your truth.